Welcome to the first UCL Fantasy team selection video of the season. I'm going to be locking in my team in the deadline stream, so be sure to tune in on the Tuesday, the 6th of September, an hour or so before the deadline. You'll be seeing it come up on your feed, but let's get straight into this one, and we're going to try to get this video to over 200 likes, and let's try to get very close to 13,000 subscribers. Let's keep on pushing. Thank you for all your support. It's much appreciated as always, and let's just jump straight into it. I've gone for the same goalkeepers in all of my drafts, Courtois and Gribich, but I am considering alternatives such as Oblak, who's 5.5 million, or those that are even cheaper and maybe have two rotating goalkeepers. But my plan is to go for someone who's proven. Courtois got a significant number of points more than any other goalkeeper last season with one of the match awards, save points and clean sheets. And he has a very good group this season. Leipzig might be a bit challenging, but you'd still expect Madrid to get some wins and possibly get some defensive returns there. So I'm going for someone who's proven, someone I trust. And then as the season progresses, maybe a match day three, if I play my wild card, I could then have a bit more information about maybe the best budget goalkeepers. And then I can rotate with two of them. So that's something I'm looking to do in the future. But for now, I could just go for someone who's proven, start Courtois every week. So I am considering alternatives and maybe going for something different. But as things stand, Courtois is going to be my goalkeeper in match day one. I've only made one change to the back line and that's Sergio Ramos in for Joe Gomez. But there could be more changes still. And one big flaw, which I'm going to highlight later on when you see how the structure of my team is, is that I have a lot of players playing on the 6th of September. Now, that's not necessarily a bad thing for match day one, but in the weeks to come, a lot of these players will be playing on the Wednesday. And what that does is only gives me a handful of players playing on the Tuesday in match day two, potentially on match day three. And that's when I will be limited in terms of the impact I can make through my substitutions. If you have a balance of players playing on the Tuesday and Wednesday, for example, you have eight on the Tuesday and seven on the Wednesday. That's a really nice balance to have because because you will never kind of be sure and you always have opportunities to downgrade or put those players that blank or don't do that well to your bench and you have more opportunities to have your bench players make a real impact. So hopefully that makes a bit of sense. You can check out my how to play UCL fantasy guide and I'll explain everything in detail there. But substitutions are key. You can make them manually in the substitution window after the Tuesday matches are completed and before the Wednesday matches begin. So you've got a short window where you can change your captain and also make those substitutions so that is a big flaw about my team and a lot of these defenders are playing in the same group Alexandro Otamendi and Sergio Ramos are all facing each other in the weeks to come so that is a bit of an issue and ideally I'd want to upgrade my defense a little bit maybe go from Alexandro to a five million defender like uh, Christian Romero who gets a lot of ball recoveries he got zero points last season because Spurs won in the Champions League but when he was at Atalanta he was incredible in UCL fantasy and he even got man of the match awards in Anfield field when he faced Liverpool and he got so many ball recoveries so I am considering a few alternatives I don't like Alexandro too much but I think Sergio Ramos could offer insane value at 5 million this year you've also got Nuno Mendes who has attacking threat he's got a few assists this season you've got Joao Cancelo who was the best UCL fantasy defender in the last campaign Otamendi was one of the very best so this is a good defense Reynildo is the best for ball recoveries in general 75 ball recoveries and he only got to the quarterfinals where they got knocked out by and City, but I still think my defense needs a bit of work. I've made two changes to my midfield, and that's Florentino and Leroy Sane in for Fabinho and Taylor. Now, I'm still quite conflicted about this one. I like Jorginho a lot. I think he's worth 5.5 million and he offers insane value. De Bruyne, I'm a bit concerned about him perhaps with him being benched against Nottingham Forest and I think he will play most of the Champions League games but it's still something that's a bit concerning Pep Roulette but I love his price at 10.5 million you could go to Salah at 11 but you could argue that City will probably dominate their group a little bit more although that's certainly up in the air and that's all speculation and Cuckoo is fantastic value at 9 million simply put he's going to get a lot of attacking returns him and Werner could form a really good duo Werner scored a hat-trick the other day and Cuckoo continues to score in pretty much every single game whether it's in the Bundesliga or in the German Cup final he just always delivers and Leroy Sane was the highest scoring UCL fantasy midfielder last season with 84 points and he has now started some games at the beginning of the season it was Musiala starting over Leroy Sane but now Sane has regained his place which might be a bit harsh on Jamal Musiala but Bayern Munich have a lot of options and I still like their attack a lot you could argue though that the first two games for Bayern Munich are difficult on paper so Leroy Roy Sane's ceiling isn't as high as perhaps someone around a similar price like Nkunku, but 
Still, I like this midfield a lot. I think it's arguably better than the last one. And who exactly is Florentino? Well, he is starting every single game for Benfica so far. Four out of four starts. He's making a lot of ball recoveries and he could offer better value than Fabinho potentially. But both of them will make a lot of ball recoveries. I think Fabinho perhaps a little bit more, but there's also a 1.5 million difference in price. And also in terms of defenders, if you're looking for a budget defender, Nuno Tavares at 4 million. He's got three goals in four starts and Marseille have a decent group. Spurs is probably the favourite to win the group, but Marseille could go for second place and Nuno Tavares could get clean sheets from time to time, but also attacking returns. And he's only 4 million. You've got Florentino at 4.5 and also another striker we're going to talk about very soon. We've got a few options, but there's one in particular who has had an incredible start to the season. But overall, I like this midfield a lot. There could be a few changes, maybe De Bruyne to Salah, or another midfielder and perhaps I will shift things up a little bit across the whole team but as things stand I'm very happy with this draft and it could end up being my final team and it just goes to show that there's quite a lot of different options in UCL Fantasy this season who could really come good for you. When you look across the whole group stage, Benzema has better fixtures than Robert Lewandowski. I think it's going to be very close between the two. But for match day one, I will admit, I do prefer the Polish striker. It's a really close call between them. And let me know what your thoughts are on that situation. Lewandowski was better in terms of points per minute, but Benzema ended up scoring the most points overall. He was the standout player of the last calendar year in the Champions League. He scored so many clutch goals for Real Madrid and he was an integral part to their triumph but this forward line looks incredible one of Benzema Lewandowski will probably be in my team although Haaland is very hard to ignore with the form he's in he's probably the most informed player in the world right now apart from Neymar and speaking of him he added yet another goal in PSG's recent 3-0 victory although Messi was pulling the strings in terms of the assists Mbappe is also scoring a lot of goals but Neymar's getting both goals and assists more so than his other two partners in crime up front so Neymar at 10 million is an absolute bargain Despite the fact they face as Juventus in match day one, which could be difficult, it's just so hard to turn down a player of that calibre in the form that he's in, probably the form of his life, and he's got some good fixtures after match day one, and Neymar for me at 10 million is probably one of the best bargains of any premium we have at our disposal. But the forward that I want to really talk about is Jutkla. Hopefully I'm pronouncing that right. If I'm not, then be sure to correct me in the comments section. He's 5.5 million and he has scored five goals in six matches with two assists. He is starting all the games as well. And maybe the kind of group isn't that great from Club Bruges perspective, but it's still not a bad group. Or it's not awful. You know, by Leverkusen and Porto, even Atletico Madrid, you know, they're not the worst fixtures in the world. Club Bruges might finish bottom. They could maybe finish third, but you never know. And Club Bruges gave PS a good game last season and Jutgla could be fantastic value and not only that he's an ultimate differential at 1% you've got Neymar as well who's going under the radar he's still 14% a lot of people look at the points scored last season Neymar was very disappointing so they kind of skip him but I think Neymar's completely worth it match day two I mean look at that fixture then you've got a double header in match days three and four against Benfica that's not bad at all and PSG are one of the most informed teams in the world right now Karim Benzema Lewandowski will be very difficult but you have to look at the group overall and Benzema definitely has it better off and Celtic isn't a bad way to open up your Champions League campaign although it is a way and Celtic have an incredible atmosphere so it's very tough I don't think there's a clear-cut answer in terms of which team you really need to go for back your gut I wouldn't recommend copying anyone including myself go for your decisions make your own errors and also make your own triumphs in terms of your decision making and the game will be much more fun in that way but this is a very good draft for me from match day one and it could do well until the end of the group stages but I am considering playing the wild card as I tend to do in match day three and possibly play the limitless when I'm very happy with the fixtures overall and I tend to play that also in the group stages remember we get unlimited transfers heading into match day seven the round of 16 so that's also something else to consider so thank you very much for watching this video I'm going to be showing you now how this team would line up and show you the captaincy thoughts because you can captain someone on the 6th of September and the 7th and then we'll be wrapping up this video despite how impressive this team looks and I'm very happy with it the big problem, as I mentioned earlier in this video, is the dates. Look at that. Pretty much everyone is playing on the 6th of September, except for everyone on my bench. So only four players in the future. I will only have four players playing on the Tuesday and the rest will be playing on the Wednesday. So that limits my gains from substitutions and also the captaincy. I don't really have a clear standout. Maybe Sane on the 7th, but he's facing Inter Milan away. So that's why I'm heavily considering going for Lewandowski over Benzema and also getting some more players playing on the 7th of September. It's not the be all and 
Lendor, but I think I am limiting myself in terms of the point ceiling. Let me know if you've got a similar issue. I think the defense is probably one of the key components which needs a bit of changing as a result. And I've got a lot of 4.5 million defenders. So there's probably going to be a few more changes in the deadline stream. I'm going to be talking through that and that will be my final team. I believe there will be a few changes, but it's also very important to highlight this kind of thought process when you're talking about the team selection because sometimes it's not that simple especially in new cell fantasy when you can change the captaincy and the substitutions but overall if it wasn't for that i'd be very happy as things stand with this team benzema will be my captain on the 6th of september and on the 7th it will be leroy sane but i think i'm limiting myself like i said with the captaincy and the substitutions but thank you very much for watching if you enjoyed this video or found it useful be sure to smash the like button and subscribe for new let's get this video to over 200 likes and we're very close to 13,000 subscribers so let's keep on pushing you can follow me on twitter and instagram dylan rcm and also check all the links in the description below including the patreon the channel memberships the discord server and the UCL Fantasy League. So it'd be a pleasure to see you on all of that. I wish you all the best for the upcoming Champions League season and I'll see you next time. <laughs>